let's move on to the next guy and then we'll we'll end it with some of these younger guys who have been hurt who are easily going to make it up into this area that we've now slotted all these guys into uh, which is why this is a fun discussion because we slotted some guys in and now when you come back in you're like i gotta go well ooh, maybe 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 i gotta have him there so David Montgomery, the Eagle Scout, the guy that we love over here. We've been we, we kind of did some rankings last year of, of the, the the of some some running backs and where to take guys. And I said, "Fuck it, give me David Montgomery above this guy and that guy of, of a lot higher than than a lot of people would have taken him." We saw a little injury there with David Montgomery. He was having a great season, injured, came back, man, and then finally just had you know maybe another David Montgomery type of game here. Look, had a couple of runs that looked outstanding as david does um so let's let's talk a little david montgomery i know he was he was the guy that you definitely wanted to bring up in this conversation so uh, the floor is yours my friend robbie i feel like david montgomery is now getting us two injury scares where you thought he was done for the year you guys remember the start of 2020 season and he pulls his groin mm -hmm. what was it a couple weeks before the season right. and first reports are is he's done for the year and then he, I think he missed one game, came back or something like that. And then we saw this year that knee he goes down with the knee and you're like, Oh no, whenever someone goes down with that knee, you're, you're, you're afraid for the, for the season and misses enough games where, where it hurts you. But uh, I think that's one thing that's kind of crazy is that he just keeps on beating some of these, these injuries you think are going to hold him out. But no, I, I think we saw it this last game where he, he makes moves. I, I think, I think, what we saw for the first two years of his career was what we're seeing from Najee Harris, where he has to break three tackles mm -hmm. to, to get, get two, yards. two yards. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and so people aren't giving him the respect, especially because he's a third round pick on the Chicago bears. Right. So nobody cares about Dave Montgomery because his, his stats don't, don't, they don't look good. If you don't watch the and tape. A point, I was about to say a point you made earlier. Nope. Not, not a whole lot of people wa watching, you know, eight to 10 David Montgomery games. And they don't understand how good of a pass catcher this guy was at Iowa State. And now with Tariq Cohen out, and I think they showed it last year too, he is a phenomenal pass catcher. And the moves he makes when the ball is in his hands, he instantly becomes that running back once he, he secures the football. It's fantastic to watch. Um, it's not going to be there every game because that offense is as bad as it, as it is. But that's what's exciting. If you believe in Justin Fields and you believe in the growth he can have with – you know, may, most likely a new coach. I know we talked about that last time we were together. Nagy probably on his way out. Maybe we'll see. But maybe it's probably a new GM. Him. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so maybe new uh, offensive philosophy, uh, better quarterbacking. Can we finally get that rookie left tackle in? Can we get some more offensive line help? We talk about all these other guys and we say, you know, their situations are bad. They don't have a quarterback this. Like he has one. Let's just get him to play what the expectations are he has some pieces on the line let's just get him healthy and he's still producing without some of these things being perfect for his situation he's not right. doing the same thing that maybe Najee is with 3.3 yards per carry he's still getting you 100 yard games every other game that he's played so far this week or this this year right and and like you said they they um, they did try to address the, le the tackle issue and drafted um, the, the guy out of Oklahoma State. Kevin Jenkins, right? Yeah, and and haven't had him, you know, basically at all. Um, and hopefully, you know, you could get him back next year and then maybe make a couple more improvements to that line and actually have a, a real deal offensive line. And, you know, I, I think he does get um, – just for you know doesn't get the excuses the people don't like him people hate him for whatever reason other guys get benefits of the doubt and david montgomery gets none of it even after he just won and put near and dear to him, i'm sure a lot of fantasy owners hearts won the championship like you were saying earlier won a lot of people championships last year still couldn't get any respect if you didn't have him on your team if you have david montgomery on your team you respect david montgomery but if you were out on him because he ran a four six and didn't have a great three cone drill and didn't have a, a big broad and 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 uh vertical jump to up that burst score the metrics don't look great he was a little bit old you know just all the people hated him you had to have miles sanders there's no way you could ever take David Montgomery over Miles Sanders. Casey made the argument. You got to do that, and, and and we had those discussions with Josh Jacobs as well. And and we've been really high on David Montgomery, but he's never going to get the respect, even if he plays well. When he plays well, you read a Roto World blurb, they're still talking shit. Like they just the narrative is that he's not good because he wasn't 
that athletic. He, but he, when you watch him play, he doesn't look like he runs a 4-6. He doesn't look like he doesn't have agility. It looks exactly like he did in fucking college where he's just beasting these dudes with the ball in his hand. And so, I, like, I don't even care. Um, I don't care that he's never going to hold value. Sometimes when I'm drafting, um, I, I, I will take players who I know are going to hold value with the public because if, if something doesn't go necessarily right, even Javante, like, he's going to get free passes if he has an injury or he doesn't perform well. People are going to make excuses for him. And, and it's just the opposite logic with other players. Like even, like Montgomery and, and Clyde edwards Hilaire can play well, and people still won't give him that respect. Um, and it's just crazy. But, you know, he's he's an unrestricted free agent in 2023. I can't see how the Bears don't extend this man. Like, they got to give him some money, and he can't be that expensive. And he's everything they could want, anyone could want in a running back. And uh, like we said... He's a he's an eagle scout and just just a beast. Just puts in the work. You're not gonna have any issues with him off the field. And he he gets what's blocked and breaks tackles and catches the ball well. He's an, he's an awesome dude. Um, I don't know if I'm as high as you might have him. We haven't put him up against some players yet, but Let's I guess do that's it. Let's what do we it. should do. All right. So where do we need to start? All right, like, uh, Alvin Kamara. So we've kind of been going through this. Is he is he above Alvin Kamara? I think that's right. You, you're hitting right, right where I, I'd have him. Because um, I think the Kamara thing is, is I don't know what that offense looks like. I, and I get it. Situations change. So I, I, I can be a little bit hypocritical in that. I don't want to judge a player on their situation because it changes. But currently, I feel like I see the trajectory up for Montgomery. And he's already doing – I guess I'd have to look at the season. But I feel like he's been – when healthy – doing what Kamara has been doing when healthy as well. And so if I see that that trajectory going up with David Montgomery and, and Kamara probably staying consistent and then you get a couple of years on top, they're, they're right there, uh, probably 9 and 10 for me, uh, maybe 11, 12, something, somewhere around there. Um, what, but I do have them behind Eckler. Like I said earlier, different video, Eckler the, then Kamara. I'm going to have Montgomery kind of split that gap for me. Jay Wayne, I, I, which, which is high. Which let's just let's just say what it is, guys. I'd say we're all three probably higher than consensus for sure. Consensus, uh, you have the number right next to him. Yeah, what he's, is he? he's at forty-seven. Forty-seven, way too low. Right, which, but that so this always, is November, right? Been, and and he had, and he was hurt, and so and and and, and I don't know that it was that matter. great early in the, the season. He wasn't even even after winning the season for you last year. He wasn't anywhere right. near where he nobody was. wanted to give him credit for those six games because it was a bad. Teams, run defenses that he played and they couldn't easy. talk there were just so many bad yeah, but run nobody defenses. cared about jonathan taylor's schedule it's just crazy yeah, how that so, works um did you have something else there no no go ahead where, where would you guys have him because again we, we want to just say that we're all probably higher than consensus which can make this a good buying opportunity for other people in, in their leagues where they say sure, oh montgomery's right. down here That's, hey you can you can flip two players in the same tier because again we're talking a lot of players that are probably in the same tier flip the top guy that's expected in that tier, turn him into Montgomery plus. And I, I personally would think you'd come out a winner. Most of those names being uh, right. someone that you're going to, you're going to be changing to somebody better. I think that was, that's kind of what I was going to lead off with after you said with kind of what you just said is that, you know, again, we're, you're doing this to break in tiers and figure out who goes in what round and where you feel comfortable. And I'm always going to know that I'm going to have Montgomery a little bit higher. I'm going to take him a little, but I don't have to take him as high as I like him. Right. I know as that as he's going to be down a little wait. bit, but I'm always going to take him yep. probably around earlier than consensus is saying to take him because I want him. And I think he's great. Look, this guy, he just exudes greatness. I, I, I love what he does, he's great. He continues to grind. He continues to improve. He wants to put in the work. Um, he just wants it. He wants to be great. He's never that, that work ethic is something that a lot of these other guys I don't think necessarily have. They want to rely on being just steady on that talent, and, and they don't want to do what it takes to continue to get better. Um, and that's what's going to make these the great ones 
really great. That's what's going to put Najee Harris up there. That's what puts JT up there. Um, that's what's put a lot of the great ones up there is that they want to continue. I'm not saying he's on those on, on the level of those guys, talent-wise necessarily. but No, but the work ethic, but, and because he doesn't have the talent to just rest on, he doesn't have that athletic just freakish, freakishness. He has to put in that work. Right. And like those, he but does he wants have talent. To, and he wants to. But the guys that will put in that work, they you see those are the ones that have the prolonged careers. Those are the ones that do continue to get better every single offseason and don't just rest on their laurels. So I like that you brought that back because I felt almost uh, like I shouldn't have brought up all the off the field character no, no, that's, stuff. But that's I mean I I might still take Alvin Kamara and Austin Eckler. Um, I think so. I think I would do and, that as and, well. You know the Nick Chubbs of the world, and then but but then after that. After that, I, and again, might be too high, like you're saying still, and I'm even a little lower than you are, might still be a little high, um, but then I'm, I might throw David Montgomery in there. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe once we get to chopping up some of these Dobbinses and CEHs and ETs, maybe he slides down even a couple more, but I would take him in front of uh, probably Jacobs. I'd take him in front of Sanders for sure. Um, I'd take him in front of Aaron Jones. Uh, probably take him in front of Derrick Henry. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd probably slot them right after that. Um, you know, after I've taken the Barkley and the Gibson and the Javante, then here comes Austin Eckler and, and Kamara. And I'd probably, uh, slot David Montgomery right in there because I, like you said, I don't even think we've come close to seeing, uh, the ceiling because of the situation that he's been dealt. And he, all he's done is just turn, you know, what's the chicken shit into chicken salad or chicken salad. I don't know how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I think he's just turned a dog shit situation into into greatness at, at periods. Um, so and he just he's continued to get better throughout the time in the league. So that's what do you got, Jay Wayne? All right, I got nothing else. All right, where else? Well, who else? I know you want to kind of bring up some of those other guys. So what do you uh, what do you got on J.K. or Cam or uh, E.T. All those kind of guys that are younger and hurt. We thought we're going to be the changing of the guard, make this transition of power a little smoother, a little more smooth, um, but hasn't quite happened because of some injuries. So, uh, and, and, and you those guys, yourself with a grammatical correction. I did. Wow. Those those guys will will continue to ascend as they get healthier and the blurbs come out and people get more on board uh, with with being comfortable with those guys. So, uh, let's let's get your thoughts on this final uh frontier of of uh running back talk today yeah i think the the three trio right the the three guys that are out travis Etienne, uh cam Akers, and jk dobbins have some some kind of similarities and maybe i'll separate cam Akers because i think it's worth the discussion on the type of injury he had versus the other two but let's stick with jk dobbins and, and etn um out for the year we're not expecting any of that stuff to, to linger. Right. And I think that that presents such a value uh, one, especially with ETN, because we're not sure about that James Robinson situation. Right. That's a name that we haven't brought up and honestly kind of surprised wasn't in the, the, the listing there. Right. Um, where does he even fall in DLF's uh, ADP here? He is running back 23. So he's 64. So I think there it's worth a conversation of what does that backfield look like? when they're both healthy and, and I'm, I'm a guy that I think I still like ETN and I like the investment they made. If, if he hadn't gotten injured, um, I was always the, the guy that loved what James Robinson did. Don't think that NFL teams will, will go into that, especially when they draft a first round running back. It's just not how they'll treat an undrafted free agent, even though he was fantastic. It, it, it's just what at least Urban Meyer kind of showed you by taking a running back in the first round. It seemed like Travis Etienne was, was poised for that. So now he gets hurt and we see that ADP is suppressed. I think this is, we were talking about what, what do you trade and how can you make a trade at this point in the season? I think that's the guy, and you made that point, trading for these, these injured guys that won't help a contender right now. I think that's maybe where you look at um, doing Kamara for an ETN plus because I, I like ETN at that level where I think he can get to where Kamara has been in the past. For sure. But he also has the youth. And and so that's that's where I'd look to try and get a piece with him. Um, and, and then look at J.K. Dobbins. Uh, maybe not exactly the same situation because I don't know what that backfield looks like. You know, Gus Edwards also got hurt. Does he come back and it's just J.K. Dobbins? Is he's probably still splitting. Obviously, Lamar, they're rushing a lot. 
Um, but again, another guy who was injured scores a ton of touchdowns in an offense that is known. I mean, they're making Devonte Freeman look good. They made yeah. Latavius hey. look good. Hey, for a couple he weeks. looks decent. Devonte. <laughs> <laughs> We were so just talking about how Javante yeah. has some juice. So it looks like he's still got some juice. <laughs> Which is crazy because you watch the first two games and you're like, man, get this guy off this roster. I remember week four, he gets stuffed in the backfield. I'm like, what is this guy even doing? They need to cut him. And yeah, he has been looking good. And so I think you get J.K. Dobbins back in that offense. And and he where he's going, obviously you have to move him down because of injury. But I think we're at a point where we need to have him back in this co- in this conversation because we've seen it happen. ETN, we haven't quite seen it happen, which I'm not too worried about because I think running backs come in, they can be at their prime rookie season as we saw in 2020 with all those backs taken off. I, I think we can see that from ETN, but I know we've seen it from J.K. Dobbins. Efficiency, touchdowns, good rushing offense. He Honestly, if we want to talk about a guy that maybe we should be in this conversation, I don't know if he's quite there for me, but once we get past maybe the Montgomery, Camara, and now we're getting back into those older guys, we're, we pushed down the Aaron Joneses, right? We haven't said his name, Zeke Elliott. Um, I don't know. You, did you guys have Dalvin Cook? Because I, I, we haven't said his name yet, and I don't have he, him. He's going to be down there. We're just uh, with injuries and off the field stuff. He's just going to be way down there for we, me. We pushed same, him off to the side. Me. Same for me. I don't know if consensus views it that way, but same for me. You so don't have where, to take where, your Dalvin Cook off. You just push him to the yeah. side. <laughs> <laughs> so where where does J.K. Dobbins fit in uh, for you guys? Because I think that'd be the where I'd start with this conversation. As we don't have to worry about this injury lingering and maybe no competition like like Travis Etienne may or may not have. Yeah. Well, we already know that the general public consensus wants to have Cam Akers as a first round running back. We saw that already. We, we know they want it. And we know they want J.K. Dobbins kind of right near the back of that first round already. So we know they have the power to be there. And they would probably be there if they were healthy and on the field playing right now. Like I said, so they would have made that transfer of power from these older stalwarts to where we're at now with the JTs and uh, Swifts and Najis of the world. They would have made that switch a little more comfortable. And we probably wouldn't be having as much of a lengthy conversation as we just really had here. Um I, I could definitely see by the time that, that um, June, July rolls around that I, that I have, I love J.K. Dobbins. I, would, I, I could see him, him being right back up there and, as a second round startup pick. And I, Cam Akers are talking about maybe even being in a playoff run. Like he's healthy, he's moving around, he's running. They're saying that he could be back for a playoff run with the Rams. So, um, you know. Kevin Durant's 30 years old and had a, had an Achilles and has come back and, and has looked great. Don, Devon, Donta Foreman finally back on yep. the field and it took him a while, but you know, definitely a different athlete, definitely a different style of player. Um, and everybody's different. It's a lottery pick. So who knows? But I think if you, if, 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 if you see any of cam makers in this off season uh, or in this uh, playoff run here for the Rams and he looks anything at all half decent, like he's healthy enough to be the guy he'll be, uh, a first round startup pick next year or, or cusp first rounder, I think, because people are dying for that to happen. They wanted it to happen so bad. Um, and, you know, J.K. Dobbins, I, I feel really comfortable about him. I love the situation. I would have taken J.K. Dobbins over Cam Akers uh, in the past go around anyway. Um, so I, I still feel pretty good about it. All these guys had early injuries, so that's not like it was uh, they didn't get hurt you know, halfway through the season. So we should, should be able to get a look at them maybe in, in the summer. Uh, the, the, week, the, the ETN one's a little weird, but I feel okay about a Liz Frank, um, and him coming back. And that could be a, a situation where you, you know, you end up with another, we've seen it a couple times where a guy with a foot injury has a foot injury, comes back, it's another foot injury. And then we don't really, we haven't heard about too many of the, those foot injury guys after maybe the second go round with that. Um, so that would be a bummer, but I, I agree with you. I, I, I know he, Jason is loves ETN. We were big ETN guys, both huge into ETN. James Robinson, maybe not quite having the season that maybe after ETN went down that everybody thought he might have, um, uh, being as consistent, the Jaguars haven't been good. We're seeing right now what Gardner Minshew was dealing with, um, in that situation with, and, and, you know, so that's, I think that's the only thing you could hold against. Uh, Travis Etienne is that he's going back to the Jaguars and look, you know, 
these right now what you're holding against Trevor Lawrence if you're talking super flex. It's can he can he get over the Jaguars? Can you get over the Jag? But we've at least seen running backs in those scenarios. Fournette, Robinson, and E.T. I think is just a special, special guy. Um, so I think all those guys could be up there. Where I have him slotted out right now, honestly, I don't have a great answer uh, for you where I would w- would slot them. But I could say that I will probably end up, when we're talking and doing startup drafts and mocking it up in June and July and, and talking about full-on startups, it's really just going to be where the value ends up laying and where those guys end up being drafted and where I can pick them. I'll probably end up with one. I want to end up with one of those three guys probably. Cause I, I, I like all like acres, uh, JT and, and ET and whichever one seems to be getting pushed down the furthest. That's the one I'm going to probably end up trying to get, have the most of. That's probably going to be ET acres is probably going up the highest. He's the one I am least intrigued with. Cause he's the one I liked the least out of all those dudes. Um, I would have taken J.K. Dobbins over Akers uh, in, in this year's, in, in, in a 2020 startup. Um, because, and, and nothing necessarily against Akers, I think there is some some learning, there's still some improvement he needs to make, but I like Henderson, you know? <laughs> so like, I like Henderson a lot. He's there for at least another year. He's an unrestricted free agent, 23. Acres is 24. Well, that's, that's the thing that nobody ever took into account with Acres. It was just all going to be Acres, where I think those guys could have a nice symbiotic relationship right. with one another, where Acres is very good, or uh, Henderson is very good. He just hasn't stayed healthy. When he was healthy in the beginning of the season and they were feeding him, he was fucking awesome. Like, And then he got a little banged up, and they kind of got away from the run game. Uh, gotten a lot of drop back situations with Stafford and and the, and the Rams need to get back to running the fucking football. They could they they would greatly benefit from having two running backs right now. And I think those guys need each other to to really uh, thrive and survive. And and you know, so I think you know just as you could point out Robinson and Et, uh, you know, I think you could and Gus and and Jk. Even though nobody likes to talk about it, Gus Akers, has- Akers and Henderson should have a a, a time split, right. And Gus is there. He's got, he's signed for a few more years on a super low. James Robinson, being an undrafted free agent, doesn't have that four year contract. They, uh, you know, I think he could be out of there if they wanted to. Probably not the best move. They should probably keep him. But I don't know. They know what they're doing. You know, it's really a big bummer over there in Jacksonville. Um, you know, like Urban Meyer having to apologize for fucking playing a hurt James Robinson down thirty points in the end of the fourth quarter when he's dealing with two different injuries like what are you doing just i tried to defend urban meyer but i he's out it's he's, hard he's not he's not coming back next season i don't think i i don't know i i don't know that i even want him to i don't know what to do about that i don't I even like the guy out, i was just but, defending him like hey let's yeah get, i'm not a fire a coach guy after a first like give him right, a couple chances right. but i think he's he's just too much he's just a fucking idiot they, they yeah. give joe judge three years in, in new york <laughs> media they can they can give uh most coaches a year or two, but yeah, I think he's also out, but um, I want to pose another question because I think it's, it's easy for us to say, you know, if acres comes back and, and kind of does what he did last year where he came on the scene late in the year, right. Has a, a crazy game. I think he had like 150 plus yards, 170 yards, whatever it was. And, and that's why people got so hyped. I mean, people are hyped about acres in general, but it was that last couple games where he just looks on fire and it pushes up his ADP right. before his injury. But I, I think it doesn't matter unless we make that investment before he's back, right? Like if you wait to see if he's back, it's too late. Would you right. guys be willing to risk? Um, I don't even know how to put a price on it, but um, would you guys make the drop down from a? Let, let's do some of these twenty-six year old guys, right? Let's do the. Let's not do Kamara and Eckler, but let's do Dalvin. Well, we know how we feel about Dalvin. Let's go Aaron Jones, Zeke. And maybe even um, Henry. Yeah, Henry in that. Would you guys move away from one of those guys for four acres? I I would. I don't think I would, man. I mean, lot- I guess Aaron Jones. I probably would. Aaron Jones. I could. I could. I could get out on Aaron Jones a year too early. Take on Acres, so I know is going to get some more slack, and everyone really loves him. With the intention of maybe trying to turn Acres into something else, I, I would rather have J.K. or or Dobbins or Clyde 
Edwards Hilaire. You know, I'd rather have those guys over Acres. Um, I just maybe that's wrong, but I, I don't think I would move Aaron Jones. I think I'd hold on to Zeke and, and probably Derrick Henry. I think there's a it's lot tough. of there's probably probably you know, should again, move off from Derrick Henry if you could. Just like anything else, there's there's context of that situation. Where's your team at? What are you doing? Um, what what exactly is the yeah. trade? Um, but in a vacuum, if you want to phrase it that well, let's way, say, let's I say want a vacuum. You're, you're, yeah, you want, you're looking for a good Dyson vacuum. Now, let's say let's say you're rebuilding, and, and and so these older guys, and again we say older guys, knowing that most of them should have two, three years, and who knows how much longer. And that's why I think this is such an interesting thing. If you move on from Zeke, because you're rebuilding, right, you need to trade Zeke because he has 1,500 carries. He's been, you know, getting 300 touches each season. Do you move on for him for acres, which I wouldn't even say is a for sure thing to be that level in general because we – And coming off an Achilles – you and, know? And yeah, I'm, I'm talking about not even don't, like imagine we didn't have the Achilles. Let's just say he's just coming in the second year. We haven't heard about it. There's, it hasn't been any injuries. We, we honestly saw just a, a small sample, right, of like three or four games. We know the talent. We know his draft pet, pedigree. We know the struggles he had to overcome at Florida State. And so I get all that. But it's still a, a risky investment, I would say, when you add on the injury and just the fact that he didn't catch passes necessarily in, in, in that stretch of games or really is his rookie season. Um, and Henderson has looked so good at times. And like, so that's looked- why I guess I'm curious. Yeah. Is that you move that that's the rebuild, right? You got to move from the older guy to the younger guy, but it's kind of, for me, it's more of that Miles Sanders thing of where, what if he just doesn't pan out? And now I've sold an asset that could be good for two years. And when Zeke hits his hundred yard game in week two, I could have sold him for something better or use him for another year. You know what I'm saying? Like I, yeah. I'm kind of rambling here, but I'm curious at what no, I, point. Well, like I said, we'll, we'll go back to the Dalvin trade that we had to give it some context on a rebuilding team. Uh, we were trying to trade a first, a first, and we were, we, I think we were trying to get a one and a two um, and Cam Akers, and we were trying to trade Madison and Dalvin. That was like that was a trade that we were trying to to get done. And they wouldn't they wouldn't do it. Would you set what would how much less would you have settled for? At this I wouldn't point? have really settled for anything less. That's kind of what I wanted, and that's what I, if not because when you that's have a lot that's to a me lot when to you ask. have the pair of Madison and Cook, I'm, I'm I think I'm pretty I've set myself for regardless of what happens. I, I think I do have two years regardless of age, and then if if Madison goes somewhere else, I think you probably have some new value in Madison, and who knows what's going to happen. This was pre. Uh, you know, Cook being in maybe some legal trouble. Um, sure. So, you know, you probably have two assets there. So it was first, second, and Cam Akers. So, you know, you would hope that you could maybe get two firsts for Cam Akers um, if, if everything goes right. So it'd be three firsts and a second for those two guys. And I, you know, I guess, that, I, yeah, I would have done that. Uh, that would have been a trade that I would have been willing to make. Whether or not I hang on to Cam Akers or not, I could now take that – I can now take that first and Cam Akers and go get somebody that I would rather have. It's just yep. more about who I can get uh, for that. And and I, the thing with Cam Akers, again, is that there was a good public swell um, for liking him because he had those I, – I don't – was that a wild card game or what What game? What was it? Week 17? It was kind of a standalone game where Akers fucking slayed it. I don't remember if it was a playoff. I think maybe it was it the week, Seattle week game thir- playoff. Week thirteen. Well, I think he did something in the playoffs, but week thirteen he goes off for. I just pulled it up because I wanted to know too. Twenty nine carries for one hundred seventy one yards. Yeah, so that's when he first popped. He um, had the week he, before. He had another game. I feel like that was either playoffs or right before post-season. the playoffs, where Henderson was out and he got all the work and he slayed. It was it. like the last game of the regular season because people were all like. He did all this with Daryl Daryl uh, Henderson in there, and it was like, no, Daryl Henderson was ruled out. He was hurt. Yeah, that's when they Seattle, gave Acres all the work. They didn't give Acres all the work when Daryl Henderson was healthy, and that's the caveat: is that Daryl Henderson is so good, how can you not give him some of the touches and, and take away from the ceiling of what could be a guy all the by counterpoint himself? Counterpoint of that is going to say, you know, well, Henderson wasn't that great this year, so it's going to be Acres again. But I think back to the point is. I don't know if it's necessarily I mean, about Vase Cam. Ben Burn with Todd Gurley. He probably wants to work both them boys in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would uh, hopefully, or maybe he doesn't give a fuck. Like, 
Just keep drafting running backs. Um, but I think for me it would be, yes, I th- I would probably be willing to trade for Cam Akers and then tra- probably try to move Cam Akers again. But I, I guess I'm not quite as off of Cam Akers as he is. Um, I still think they're. I still think he's a pretty good player. Um, and I and I love the Rams and when the run game is and they're using the run game and operating out of the run game. Now they do have a little bit older of an offensive line, which we talked about in the beginning of the season. Whitworth's like ninety eight um, years old, so they need to make some moves there, I think. But with um, all the draft picks, they don't have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess your answer would be I would probably sell one of those guys if I was a little bit more in the rebuilding mode. And if I was not in the rebuilding mode, I still might even consider selling Derrick Henry for, you know, Cam Akers plus maybe a little something else, um, trying to get something else and then maybe turn Cam Akers in, into something else or hold him. Like, yeah, you might be, you might get another year or two out of Henry and, and maybe he helps you. Maybe Henry on this next year helps you win a couple games that you didn't want to win and you're still rebuilding and you're getting those points out of your lineup and, and Cam Akers is a new hot thing that you could sell for two or three draft picks if he comes back and, and does some work. So, yeah, I think I would. All your right. answer to wrap this up? Yeah, I think that's that's where where I might draw the line and go back to my – very, very first point when we started this off in the other video is that I might take the the things that I know to be to true, be, yep. to be true. And, and if it's only two or three years and, and I need to, again, we're talking about a rebuild. Cause I don't think you do this if you're a contender, right? If you're a contender, right. you're probably sticking with uh, the, these guys that are rocking it for you, but for a rebuild, um, maybe I, I rock with Zeke for another half season and then I flip him for something I'm a little bit more sure of. Um, it's probably how I feel on that, but um, I think I'm going to be the guy that's maybe higher than consensus on some of these older guys, because I don't think that they all fall off the cliff right. at age 28 or um, I, I think some of these guys are the elite talents that, that make it to be age 30. And, and so at a certain point, I want to keep those guys because we've, we've pushed them down. I'd say quite a ways, which mm-hmm. is part of this exercise. Right. And we're finding out where we slot them in. And we hadn't, we haven't said the name Zeke um, Dalvin cook and Henry yet as we've been ranking these guys, yeah. Aaron Jones, you're great. And that's another one. Only ones from that age range that we've kept up there have been the pass catching guys. So, you know, with, with Camara and, and Eckler. And so those four guys have now gotten pushed out. What are we at? Like maybe 14, 15. Mm-hmm. We're saying they're essentially not top 15 running backs at this point in dynasty, which I which think is, they probably still are going crazy. to be, but you know, do you want how many years, do you want and like you're saying you're making I, I don't disagree um i think uh so but i i like that you're uh have, have really broken down um that it, it isn't the end of the road as boys and men would say um on on some of these guys there there will be some some 27 28 29 year old success with them and and you know, they don't even have to be the RB one at 29 30 31 if you could get RB two production from them for that that's a fucking win throughout there yeah. because hopefully you've revitalized who your RB one on that team is. Uh, so, uh, well, I really enjoyed the conversation today. We should wrap this up. We've been at it for a while. We've done several different videos and, and a, a lengthy full podcast. Um, so Robbie Jeffries, tell us where you can find yourself again and, and where you, your work is. Yeah, guys love chopping it up with you. Thanks for, for letting me join you all for, you know, you know, we all like to, chat our running back so sure uh, I, i'm glad we got the premium position uh, uh to be to be on the show for the premium position so you guys can find me at nfl robbie uh, on twitter and then i'm rocking some content video content for ff underscore uh, authority so at ff underscore authority that's the fantasy authority so that's where you find me um, we're doing some some live shows on wednesdays and sunday mornings uh, for redraft and then we're also hitting uh, shows that will be uh, put out as pods uh, normally Wednesday mornings when we get those out. Yeah, along with a conglomerate of other great humans over there at the Fantasy Authority. So a bunch of different people to choose from and, and follow along with their content anywhere from Debbie to DFS to Waver to all that kind of stuff. They got you covered over there. It's a one-stop shop. Um, so I what I would do is I would trade uh, I would go after Cam, like trade uh, one of those older running backs for Cam Akers and Ramondre Stevenson uh, because I just didn't want this podcast to end without me saying, go get yourself some Ramondre Stevenson. Maybe don't pay a first round pick for him. 
try to find another way to finagle getting Ramondre Stevenson and we'll I'm sure do some later round ADP talks and I'm going to be monitoring this all season long and as long as this ADP doesn't get too crazy I will be drafting and you should be too as much Ramondre Stevenson as you possibly fucking can he looks fantastic you might have to wait another year for Damian Harris to get out of the way completely but Ramondre looks like him and Mac are about to be uh, running this this Pats O here for the next few years, and all he's done from off season to preseason to put to playing in actual games right now is just fucking look like a monster every time he touches the fucking ball. So Ramondre, motherfucking Stevenson, put well, some I, respect on his name. I hope you made it to the end of this show. The good little gym. I don't like, even care if you did. That's just so later I, I can, can be pull like, that told sound you so. clip out. Yeah. And- <laughs> told you so. We'll appreciate y'all joining us. Robbie, thanks so much, so much for coming on, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Hit us with that five-star review if you're on iTunes, and hit that subby if you're on YouTube. Appreciate you. Peace. Bing.